one of these bread blends isn't following the rules. Ah yes, red blends, known to be some of the smoothest and most balanced wines in the whole world. But what you might not know is that most producers use a pretty strict set of guidelines, including grape varieties they can blend together. So what I have here are some very popular styles of red blends from around the world, along with one producer who's doing whatever the F they want. And in that spirit, I thought we could try blending the blends together to make a super awesome master blend to rule them all. But before I try to make up my own wine, let's take some cues from the master blenders and learn by drinking. Our first contenter, Chateau Langlois Barton 2016 Bordeaux. This is a prestigious Grand Cru Class A from St. Julien, coming in at 55% Cabernet Sauvignon, 37% Merlot, and 8% Cabernet Franc. You know, the thing I love the most about this wine when I tasted it against the others was the deep, rich, dark purple color. Our next contender is a super Tuscan wine, Poderi Sapeo Volpolo from Bulgari, that is in Tuscany, a 2019 vintage. A super Tuscan is basically a Bordeaux blend, but made outside of Bordeaux in Italy. And this wine comes with 70% Cabernet Sauvignon, 15% Merlot, and 15% Petit Verdot. When I tasted this wine, I was blown away by its massive tannins. It had so much, and I loved it. The next wine in Blendception is Cellier de Prince, Chateau Neuf de Pop 2018 Vintage. Now, Chateau Neuf de Pop allows up to 20 different grape varieties, including red and white varieties, in the blend. But thank goodness these guys kept it simple with 90% Grenache, 5% Syrah, and 5% Morved. That makes this a true GSM blend. When I tasted this wine, boy did it have a pale color, but you know what I did love about it? this orange citrus zest flavors on the palate and the nose. Our next wine is a classic Rioja Bodega Solara Otaño Gran Reserva Rioja from Vintage 2011. These wines are mostly Tempranillo and this one is no different at 85% Tempranillo, 7.5% Carignan and 7.5% Grenache. When I tasted this wine, I couldn't help but love those toasty tobacco aged note that it had from being a decade old. Our last wine didn't follow the rules. There are wine regions in the world with strict guidelines on what grapes can be used in the blend, and these guys did whatever they want. And sure enough, they're from America. It's Three Wine Company established 1885 red wine blend from Contra Costa, California in 2015 vintage. This wine is a doozy. It had 30% Carignan, 30% Zinfandel, 28% Morved, 8% Petite Syrah, 3% Alicante Pochette, and 1% Black Malvoisie. When I tasted this wine, it knocked my socks off. It was the boldest of all the wines, and it had so much bombastic fruit. So I'm taking five wines from four different countries, five different vintages, and 13 totally different grape varieties to make a new blend. So now it's just a question of doing the work. So my first go around, I decided that I really liked fruit from the USA and the tannin from Italy. So I started with that and I wanted to add a little bit of Bordeaux and a little bit of Spain for the color and the age flavors. On the nose, smells like ruby red grapefruit, red cherry, a little bit of spearmint, wet concrete, and a touch of hibiscus flower. Let's give it a taste. Whoa, well, the wine has really big tannins and acids and tastes oddly like ruby red grapefruit juice on the palate. The finish is heavy. It's got this burning sensation, um, but it does have a finish. I'll give it that. Uh, but then the tannins kind of drop out and I'm left wondering what it is I put in my mouth. Let's try again. For my second wine, I went back on myself about USA and I bumped up my Spain and France with a little bit more Italy to try to get that tannin flavor and that full taste profile to come out. On the nose, 
This wine smells like black cherry sauce, a little bit of fennel bulb, milk chocolate, wet tar, and raspberry cream. Let's give it a taste. On the palate, tannins come in all around the front of the wine with nothing on the back whatsoever. In fact, the finish is so empty, it's like I just jumped off a cliff. Back to the drawing board. For my third attempt, I basically gave up everything focused only on Chateau Neuf de Pop and Italy, still trying to get that tannin texture to come out and that structure that I liked in the Italian wine while ignoring pretty much everything else. Let's give it a sniff. It smells like dill pickle, sour cherry, fresh dill, white pepper, chalk dust. Let's give it a taste. That one's the best one so far. The palette has tannin in the, in the middle front, but also in the middle and towards the finish is actually quite long. On the palate, I do get a lot of cherry berry notes with a subtle note of uh, orange zest or grapefruit. So it has fruit, it's got tannin, and it has a finish. Is it my last attempt? No. On my last attempt, I went back to USA, California plus Italy with just a little bit of everything else to round out all the flavors and colors. Let's give it a sniff. Whoa. Lots of fruit actually on this wine that comes out of the glass. Raspberries, black cherries, fig, a little bit of spearmint, subtle dark chocolate, and almost like wet crushed gravel. Let's give it a taste. This one's got a lot of texture flavor right up in front, tons of fruit. Then it goes into these tannins, which are pretty grippy on the mid palate, and then finishes smooth and with this nice little bit of sp tobacco spice on the finish. It's a very high tannin wine, but it does not suck. So the final results for Blend Deception are in. 13 different grape varieties, five vintages, and four countries went into the Folly Blend. I have to admit, it did give me a great appreciation for the classic wine blends of the world, of which I have created a poster of, which you can buy at the Wine Folly store. Part of me still appreciates those out there who are crazy enough to try something new and make their own blend. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about wine blends of the world, and until next time, throw us a like, definitely follow us, ring that bell, and salute.